So now we're going to be looking at what the integral means in terms of Riemann sums and sums of rectangles. Okay. In general, what you always want to do is um, the integral actually represents the area under a curve, right? And so that's that's might have, might have been how you've been started with the, the teaching of it, not just antiderivatives, but the integral is area under the curves. And we approximate the area under the curves by, like, if I want to find the area under this curve here, I would split it into, say I want to find this area, I would approximate it by splitting it into rectangles, okay? Now, the height of the rectangle will touch the curve, but there's a question of whether the left point touches the curve, the right, the right point of the rectangle touches the curve, or the midpoint of it touches the curve, or the trapezoid rule. So um, these are all going to be asking you to, to do this. So let's, let's just give you kind of, let's draw a nice picture for some of these so we can get a good idea of how to set up the rectangles for each of them. Okay, so I have some kind of parabola here. And it's going to go from negative 3 to positive 3. Okay. And I want the area into the curve. So first, let's do the left-hand sum. And that's where I split it into six rectangles. So first of all, my intervals, this whole interval is six wide. And so my intervals are really going to be at like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so my rectangles are all going to be this wide. The real question is, is how tall do I make the, rec make the rectangles? Well, if I'm going to do the left point sum, in, which I'm doing in red, my rectangles are going to look like this. This rectangle is going to be this high. This rectangle is going to be this high. The key part is that the left part of the rectangle um, over an interval of the rectangle uh, touches the curve. At 1, it's like this. 2, it's like that. And so these are the rectangles that I would sum up, right? So for the left-hand sum, I'm doing the sum of all of these rectangles. That means I'm doing um, um, the y value times the interval. So each one is one wide, so I'm going to do one. And this rectangle has a height of 3 squared because the function is x squared, right? So it's negative 3 squared plus 1 times this height, which is negative 2 squared plus 1 times this height, which is negative 1 squared. It's always the y value, and because y would equal x squared, right? Because this is the equation y equals x squared. Plus 1 times 0 squared plus um, 1 times 1 squared plus 1 times 2 squared. OK, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rectangles. And I would just simply compute that. So this is going to be 9 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4, uh, 2, 10, 19. OK. Now let's say we're going to do um, the right hand point. Well, it's very similar. But when I do the right hand point, my rectangles are going to look like this, because the right part of the rectangle is going to touch the curve. Sometimes a right hand point is going to be a bigger rectangle. Sometimes they're going to be smaller rectangles. It kind of depends. See, some of the green rectangles are bigger than the red. Sometimes they're smaller than the red. And so in this case, what I think about is, again, the width is 1. But then I'm doing negative 2 squared plus negative 1 squared. I'm going to drop the 1. Uh, 0 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, because this is the final one. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 there. So that's 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9, also equal to 19, just by coincidence, by symmetry, a little bit here. OK, let's do the next one in um, this light blue color. Hopefully you can see that OK. Maybe uh, I'll do it in brown, this C, this color here. So this brown color one was we're going to do the midpoint. And so rather than using the, the ends of them, I'm simply going to do this a value in between. So it's going to be 1 times negative 2.5 squared plus 1 times negative 1.5 squared plus 1 times negative 0.5 squared. Midpoint just means that my height is based off of the mid middle of the, the interval on the x value. So it would look like this rectangle, like this rectangle, this rectangle this rectangle, like this little rectangle right here, and then one like right here, like that. Okay. Um, plus 
1 times 0 0.5 squared plus 1 times 1.5 squared plus 1 times 2.5 squared. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I just confirmed that. And then here I would use a calculator to calculate these up. So 2.5 squared plus 1.5 squared plus 1.5 squared. Plus 1 .5 squared. Two. and I get 17.5. So you see these are estimates so they're not all going to give you the same answer which is totally fine because these are these are purely estimations. Um, let's pick an orange color for the next one. So for the trapezoid rule you use the left and the right one and I'm going to kind of draw it out again because it, it might be easier to kind of see. But rather than simply use the left or the right ones we're going to use, um, so you know, here's my negative three, two, one, one, two, three, okay, like this. So rather than do that, I'm gonna create these trapezoids here. And add up, so they're not rectangles anymore. I'm adding up the sum of these trapezoids, okay? So trapezoids are always half the um, one half the base times the height. So we're going to have one half times one because like, um, um, yeah, the height of these trapezoids, these are trapezoids kind of on, on its sideways, right? Because a trapezoid has two parallel bases like this, right? So you're going to take this height, the height in this case is one, okay? And then you're just going to average the two, the left and the right points. So we're going to do one half, one, this base times the, the sum of the two heights. And so that would be... Um, 3 squared or negative 3 squared plus negative 2 squared which is fine so 1 half times 1 plus negative 2 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 1 half times 1 of negative 1 squared plus negative plus 0 squared plus 1 half times 1 of 3 squared plus 2 squared sorry I'm not no, I'm just going uh, going in the wrong order um, let's see, I'm doing this one here and here. 0 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 half times 1 times 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 half times 1 of 2 squared plus 3 squared. Okay, so this is uh, 1 half times um, 9 plus 4 times 13. Uh, 4 plus 1 is 5, so that's 5 halves. That is just 1 half. 1 half, 5 halves, and 13 halves. So 13, 20, 13 plus 5, 18, 19. Uh, 19 times 2 divided by 2 is just 19. So this is going to be 19. So it turns out, because of the symmetry in this one, like it turns out like a, a, B, and D are the same, but that's not always the case. So that's how, what we're going to do for each of these problems, is just um, find the area using all three methods, all four methods, and you do need to know all four methods um, for the for, for most most calculus courses. Now we're going to compute the integral using the definition of the integral, i.e., set up the area as a sum of n rectangles and take the limit as n goes to infinity. Okay, so this is definition of integrals. You're not going to do too many of these, and they're a little bit tedious because they require some complicated sums to do, but let's do it. So. What we would say is, if I were to split 0 to 1 into n rectangles, first I start with the width of each rectangle would be my, my interval width divided by the number of rectangles. So it would be 1 over n. So that's the width of each rectangle. And then the height of re each rectangle, you can actually either do um, left-hand or right-hand sums. Actually doesn't matter um, in terms of taking it to the limit and doing the integral. I typically do right-hand sums. I think it's typically easier on notation. You can do i equals 1 to n. So we're going to sum how many rectangles? Well, we're going to sum up the rectangles from 1 to n. We want the height of each rectangle, and the height of each rectangle is always the starting point plus how many widths we, we've been over times i. Okay, so that means we start at 0 and we count how many widths you know, we've gone over the number of i's, and we're going to use that's the height of the rectangle. And then the width of the rectangle is just delta x, like this. So in terms of delta x, I got to replace it with 1 over n. So this comes sum from i equals 1 to n. f of i times 1 over n times 1 over n. And that's the sum from i equals 1 to n 
Um, f of i over n is just cubed, so I'm going to do i times 1 over n cubed times 1 over n. And this is the sum from i equals 1 to n, i cubed, 1 over n cubed, 1 over n. And then this becomes 1 over n to the fourth. And anything without an i, I can actually bring out in front. So n to the fourth, i equals 1 to n of i cubed. At this point, what you have to do is you have to do this summation um, using a formula for the sum of i cubed. So that's either commonly given, um, it's kind of annoying to derive. Not annoying to derive, it's not too hard to derive, but like it would be annoying to keep deriving it. So in this case, I'll give you the summation. For a cube, sum of cubes, um, I think it is, um, I don't want to make a mistake on the derivation of this. Um, um, it is n uh, geez. n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4 okay so when I plug this into when I, so that's what this is equal to so if I do 1 over n to the fourth um, we're gonna so we're gonna plug that into there so I'm gonna get 1 over n to the fourth times n squared n plus 1 quantity squared over 4 okay and um, this is gonna cancel with two of these so I'm going to have 1 fourth n plus 1 squared over n squared. And now I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity, as I take an infinite number of rectangles of this of 1 fourth. I can bring the 1 fourth out because anything that's a, that doesn't depend on n, I can bring out. So it's going to be n plus 1 squared over n squared. This part, if you want to do this summation, um, you could really do this as 1 fourth times n squared plus 2n plus 1 over n squared. Right, and so I can change this to um, uh, n squared plus 2n plus 1. And if you remember our rules, I sometimes I think, well, as n goes to infinity, um, these two terms are going to dominate. So this is going to be 1. You could also use L'Hopital's rule, and you'll find that this limit is equal to 1. Um, or you could do divide by n squared, numerator, denominator by n squared, and you'll also find this limit is equal to 1. So the answer is 1 fourth, because it's 1 fourth times 1. Okay, so for seven, we're gonna do the kind of the same thing. The width of each rectangle is the width of my interval, which is four divided by the number of rectangles n. Okay, the height of each rectangle is gonna start at negative one plus i times delta x. That's what I'm gonna to wanna to do. That's the height of each rectangle. And in this case, um, delta x is four over n, so that's f of negative one, oops, plus, i times 4 over n and then I plug that into here because th this is my height right so we're gonna do 3 times negative 1 plus i 4 over n plus or uh, minus 1 so these are the heights of each of my rectangle these are the widths and then I'm simply gonna sum from i equals 1 to the total number of rectangles um, the height of each rectangle which is 3 times negative 1 plus i times 4 over n minus 1 all of that multiplied by 4 over n so now we got to do a little bit of distributing this would be negative 3 plus 12 over n and then minus 1 so this is going to be the sum from i equals 1 to n uh, 12 over n oh where'd the i go uh, this would be 12 i minus, um, uh, sorry, this is negative 3 minus 1 minus 4, okay? And so I'm going to break this into two sums, a sum with an i in it and a sum without an i in it, so I can do that. 12 over n i minus the sum from i equals 1 to n of 4. Oh, I forgot my 4 over n here, wait. Uh, yeah, 4 over n here. Okay, and so I can bring out anything that doesn't have an i in it. So this is going to be 48 over n squared sum from 
n equals 1 to n, oh, i equals 1 to n. Sorry, I'm making all kinds of silly mistakes. Let me clean this up a little bit so you guys can see that a little bit better. This part was this one. This would be the 12 over n times i times 4 over n, right? And so this would be 48 over n squared sum from i equals 1 to n of i minus uh, 16 over n sum over i equals 1 to n of 1. Now this is just the sum of a bunch of 1s, right? Because I, I, I put the 16 over n, I pulled it out. What's left inside is 1. Um, and n sum of 1, this is equal to n, right? And then this sum is equal to um, n, this one, there's a rule for the sum of n terms, it's n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So this, this sum ends up being 48 over n squared times n, n plus 1 divided by 2 minus 16 over n times n, that cancels. Should have been 16. I feel like 16 is a little bit high. Oh, um, no, no, I think it's okay. Let's see what the answer we get in the end is. Okay, so this becomes, um, oh, this is over 2, sorry. And so this becomes 24 n, I'm going to distribute the n, it's going to be n squared plus n over n squared minus 16. And if I take the limit as n goes to infinity, this goes to 1 because I have an n squared over n squared. So this ends up being 24 minus 16. That's equal to 8. Okay. Now, this is a kind of tedious way to perform an integral. Like, we're going to use antiderivatives, ultimately. That's the key part of we're doing this. But this is kind of like showing you as the limit of um, the definition of a limit for the, uh, sorry, definition of the derivative as a limit. Um, Yes, it is tedious to do it by hand and by the definition. It's good to know it conceptually as to what the what you're actually doing with the summation. But in practice, what you're going to do is a lot of antiderivatives uh, when you're doing integrals. Okay. So Thanks for watching. If you're looking for more examples, go to my website. In there, I have free access to over 400 calculus questions that I solve and I show you step by step. So if you're interested in seeing more, please check out my website.